so much on our plate today. I'm going to try to keep this relatively brief. Thank you for coming to church because this is probably one of the few buildings you will walk into today or for the rest of this week. And no one is going to raise questions to you about the proper pounds per square inch of a football. I don't care. <laughs> And the instrument is yet to be invented that would, me that would measure my indifference. <laughs> Daniel, I'm going to ask you a question. You know Monday nights. I, the only thing I depend on you is to be honest. So yeah. I'm going to depend on you to be honest because everyone else here probably would be polite. You guys didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> the best of sermons, the best possible sermon you could hear, according to your standards, okay, speak only for yourself. Stand up so people can see who you are. I'm not talking to myself in a movie. In your heart of hearts, is the best of sermons the most brilliantly written sermon, the best spoken sermon, or the shortest sermon? Um, a mixture of shortest and most spoken, I'd say. Not too long, but not too late. Like, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> As long as you said shortest, that's what counts. Okay? <laughs> so we know that's the truth. And that's what I'm going to expose you to this morning, not just necessarily from me, but from my boss. I want you to hear his words because his sermon was the shortest. It's basically three phrases. His first sermon was, repent, believe the good news, the kingdom of God is here. You hear those three phrases, you know more than enough for your journey in spirituality, in your relationship with we're told to believe in good news. Jesus came to call disciples and asked us to follow, to leave our nets, whatever those nets are, the things that bind us, not necessarily the fish. Become fishers of God's children. That good news is about truth, hope, and wholeness. <coughs> Take that home with you. It's about truth because we don't grope around trying in the dark to find God. The one thing we have as Christians is to believe that Christianity is not a philosophy. And as ancient philosophies taught, if you want to find God and you want to look for God, it's like looking through a bowl of dirty water. You can see, but not very clearly. And what Jesus says is, no, you want to know about God? Follow me. Watch me. Listen to me. Do as I do. Because when you see Jesus, you see God. And it's about hope. As pessimistic, as horrible as this world can be, as miserable as the weather is going to be, and as dangerous it's going to be, allegedly, in the next couple of days, when you watch the TV shows, as I tend to, diva, uh, what do they call it, record them, so I can kind of watch the Sunday talk shows, a little bit about what's going on in the world, beyond St. John's, as much as I love him, you know, I'm terrible. Um, but you're a heck of a lot better than what I deal with on our regular shows when you realize just how helpless and hopeless our world is in its own dimensions. Christ has come. We are not without hope. We live for that hope. But most importantly, it's about wholeness. <laughs> One thing about human beings is that we're divided. And we're not just divided male and female. We're divided with poles within ourselves between grace and selfishness, we are fragmented. We have divided loyalties all the time. The scripture uses poetic language. They say light and darkness, but you can insert any terms that you wish. There's a pull within us towards what is weak, what makes me important and puts you down, what is goodness and what is sin. Jesus came to unify our disintegrated personalities and our disintegrated spirituality and to bring us the very life of God. He says, you want that good news? Very simple. Repent. You heard me. <laughs> Avery, I love you. <laughs> That's exactly right. Repent is a funny English word. It's a, trans it's a bad translation of a Greek word. And I had a sister in law who was Greek, so take me. This is gospel, okay? The original word literally means walk down this aisle, stop. Come to a crossroads, left or right, start walking one way, realize you're going the wrong way, turn around, slap yourself in the head, and then go back the other way. That's what repent means, literally. Change the direction you're walking. 
The path you're on is not bringing you where it should be. Go a different direction. Change your ways. Change your life. Change your mind. Change your attitude about sin. Don't be sad about the consequences of sin. Don't be sorry that you got caught. We got all sorts of athletes who do that all the time. I've done that many a time. Learn to hate what takes you away from the love of God. Learn to hate what makes you weak and hateful and hurtful to others. And most importantly, believe. Take Christ at his word. Believe in your heart and soul that God truly did love the world so much as our patron wrote John writes, that he sent his son for us and for our salvation, that God would make any sacrifice, walk any path, do anything to bring us home, even death on the cross. It is the one religious truth I can honestly say, you know how the proverb goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. This one, it sounds too good to be true, but what it is true. So listen to a very brief sermon. Jesus said it better than I did. I'll agree with you. Brief, not as well spoken as I hope, but listen to it. Listen with the ears of your heart. Be ready to cast aside whatever.